Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Warren Siegel, and welcome to 26 Minutes with Dr. Siegel on the Zoramed Show. On the show, we will feature local physicians and healthcare leaders who are experts in their respective fields and who will share their experiences and wisdom. We will cover a broad range of health-related topics on the show, and today we have Linda Boris of South Brooklyn Health. Thank you so much, Linda, for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm the Director of Physical Therapy here at South Brooklyn Health. I've been here for about 37 years. Um, I'm very fortunate to have um, a staff, 25 individuals who love what they do, have been here for over 14 years and make my job a lot easier. Can you tell us a little bit about physical therapy? What is it? Okay, so physical therapy, um, we, our main focus is to improve movement and function in our patients and to manage or relieve pain. So we want to enhance their mobility. So anyone that's referred to us, whether they're outpatients or inpatients, we do um, a full assessment on them. We develop plans for them, measurable goals. We always include the patient in the goals that we form because we want to have a strategic way for them to achieve their goals and to be independent in their community. That sounds fascinating. So, so you really are helping people just be able to be independent. That, that, that's really, must be an incredibly fulfilling job. How did you get involved in physical therapy? Well, I, I had an injury to my left knee playing college basketball. I tore cartilage and I tore my anterior cruciate ligament, and I had to go through intensive physical therapy. I was a biology and psychology major at college, and I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna do with that major. And after going through therapy, I had a terrific therapist. He was also a masseuse, an athletic trainer. Um, I decided, you know, this is something I, I might wanna do. And, and back then, I thought that I would go into sports medicine or rehab, because athletes I was familiar with. But, Incredible. So, so can you explain why somebody would go to a physical therapist as opposed to an orthopedist or a physician in, in, in physical medicine and rehab? Where do you fit into the healthcare team? Okay. Well, the orthopedist or the, is going to refer those patients that they think need physical therapy. So they're going to do their assessment and evaluation. Once they come to us, we in turn do our assessment, but we're the ones that are going to develop the program for them where they're working on their balance, where we're using um, a whole toolbox of modalities. So um, we are going to reduce, if they have chronic or acute pain, chronic or acute swelling, muscle spasm, all of those things that they refer to. Anybody that has a bursitis, a tendonitis, a whiplash injury, low back pain, cervical pain, we have a whole series of modalities and things that we do to work with them in addition to all the equipment that we have. So when the physicians evaluate them, they're sending them to us so that after we do our evaluation and we have a clinical assessment, we can say, okay, these are the modalities that are gonna work well, these are the facilitatory techniques we're gonna use on this patient, these are the home programs we're gonna design for them and give them, usually they start on the very first visit because we want them to get comfortable and independent with those programs at home. Well, I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be independent and stay independent. Mm -hmm. um, do you only work with people who have had injuries or is there something we can do um, and to stay healthy? Uh, how do we stay healthy, continue to be healthy? Right. And uh, I don't mean this to be funny. How do we stay away from physical uh, therapy? <laughs> exactly. Where have, when, when our patients finish, we're like, we hope we don't see you again. And it's true because we, we treat a lot of patients that have chronic illness. So, so many of those patients benefit as, as we age naturally. Our strength decreases, our flexibility decreases, our balance decreases. And those balance decreases are what puts us most at risk for falls as we get older. So anything we can do for any patient population to enhance their strength, improve their balance, um, will decrease their risk of fall. So that whole patient population that comes to us with chronic illness we work with, it doesn't just have to be an injury, a post-surgical patient, um, we'll treat 
everyone that's referred to us. So are there things that you can tell us what can we do to stay healthy and, and to continue being healthy as we get, as we get older? Sure, you, ha you have to stay active. Um, inactivity as we get older it just leads to your increased risk of fall. So um, most of us probably don't get enough exercise. And when I say exercise, you don't have to do anything crazy. If you can get in 30 minutes a day, and that could be walking, that could be doing a yoga class, that could be just increasing the activity that you do during the day. So say I'm taking a bus home. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off a stop sooner, I'm gonna walk a little bit more. Anything you can add to your day that adds to that 30 minutes is beneficial. In addition to that, any strength training you can do, mild stuff, twice a week. We want muscles pulling on the bone. Our older patients that are, that have osteo, that are at risk of developing osteoporosis, those that have arthritis, anything that we can do to strengthen the muscle mass or the large muscles around those joints that are causing the problems, the better it is for that patient, the stronger they are, and the better that their balance is. So it sounds to me like um, you have to, in order to stay healthy, you need, you're saying you need to stay active. What about somebody who is listening today and says, you know, I really want to start being healthier. I want to start being more active. Do you have any suggestions for them? Well, sure. First, anybody who is not used to exercising, make sure that you know, if you have a chronic illness or for any reason you check with your physicians first to make sure that what you're doing is okay. Um, I also recommend if there's somebody you can exercise with, somebody that you can grab and say, let's go for a walk. It, it's, it's hard, that self-motivation can be hard. So if there's anybody that you can work out with, and when I say work out, it's, it's walking, um, it's, is, there, is there a mall I can go to in the area where I can walk early in the morning? Anything that you can do to start, and then whatever, whatever interests you. You know, some people are interested in Zumba, some are interested in Pilates, some are interested in yoga. Whatever it may be, if that's going to keep you exercising, then it's good to, to get involved with those activities. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, most of us are interested in doing nothing. Yeah. We like to sit in front of our computers. We like to sit in front of our televisions. So what you're suggesting is just go for a walk. How long do I have to walk for? Well, if you haven't walked, with, if there's something you're starting, I would just say, okay, let me go 10 minutes in one direction and 10 minutes coming back. You start off, you start off maybe 20 minutes and see how you feel, even less, even if it's just to get started. If you have no pain, because the worst thing that you could do is do something where you're, you're out, you're exercising, and you have pain, because then you're not gonna wanna do it again. So I always say, if you, if you decide this week, I'm gonna do 20 minutes a day, I'm just gonna go for a walk. Great, if that feels okay, then maybe the next week you increase either the, the amount of time, like to 25 minutes, or you do a quicker pace. You'd, you'd never want to increase the frequency, duration, or time all at once. So you pick one of them, like, oh, this week, 20 minutes was great, next week I'm gonna try 25. So let's see if I get this right. Keep it simple mm -hmm. and keep it fun. Yes. Do it with a friend. Definitely. And make sure that you don't have pain while you're doing it. I remember many, many years ago, I asked a friend of mine who was a doctor and took care of a lot of people who were in their 90s and hundreds. I said, what's the one thing you can recommend to live a long life? And I remember he told me, don't fall. Now you mentioned people with balance problems. How, how do you deal with that if you wanna be healthy and you don't wanna fall? Well, those patients that come to us, when we're assessing for balance, and we have all different objective measures, okay, we are gonna work on core strength, lower extremity strength, we're gonna do everything we can, different surfaces, um, to ensure that that balance is better. Because the last thing we want is for our elderly population to fall. Um, we don't want them to, because usually when they fall, there's significant disability. They can have head trauma, right? They can fracture a hip, soft tissue injury, so balance becomes very important. If we can progress them, like when they come to us here at South Brooklyn Health, we'll, we'll have them, we'll advance them to where they're on one foot throwing a ball that weighs a few pounds at what's called our rebound and where it comes back and they have to adjust and move to it. We're just gonna progress each of their patients even if they're older. So anything that we can do to enhance that, that balance will significantly decrease their risk of fall. So what about those people who are 
stuck in their homes all day. Maybe it's the weather is bad outside. Maybe they don't live in a neighborhood where they can just take a walk safely. Right. Do you have any ideas and suggestions for them? Sure. In, in, when you're in your own apartment, I, I remember when I used to do home care and go see patients in their homes. Um, when we did strength training, I, they, I would just use whatever they had in their house. So if they had a one pound bean bag or they had a can that was two pounds and they could grip it, their hand was okay to grip it, we'd start doing some upper extremity exercise, some lower. They can do plenty of exercise in their chair. There are plenty of programs, even on the TV, that are free. Chair yoga or just exercises in the chair. Um, where you're strengthening your lobes, but even your core. You can start in the chair, you're moving, you're unsupported, you can progress to standing. There's plenty that you can do using what you have in your own home. You don't need to purchase weights and a mat and all of the other things. There's plenty in sitting and standing. So once again, it's an example of you don't have to spend a lot of money no. to be healthy. Not let's, at all. Let's, let's change for a second. You, you, it sounds to me like physical therapy is dealing with a lot of stuff of what you do. How about nutrition? Are, are there things that I should be eating to be healthier, to help me be stronger? Well, if you can find, the most effective is the diet that you have and the exercise that you do. Yes, of course, if you're gonna eat healthy, um, you, and combine that with the exercise, you're gonna stay more fit in terms of weight gain. And, and in terms of what you, if, if you start to more aggressively exercise, then, knowing, then, then there's in terms of protein and what, what you're eating. So this could be something that I incorporate into my lifestyle, not just to live longer, but to lose some weight, to be healthier. And if I remember you said, make sure that your doctor says it's okay. Uh, do you need to see your doctor before you start doing some exercise at home or walking? No, it just, it just depends. Like if you're a diabetic, you have a chronic disease, you're taking insulin or there's, there's you wanna just make sure um, whatever it is you're doing, you're gonna do safely. And just to, to review what the contraindications would be for that patient population with your physician. So if, if, if you know, something happens where you feel lightheaded when you're walking outside, or when you're walking outside in the heat, just, just to know what it is you can and cannot do, and then, and, and then go off and do your exercise. For the, for the regular person who wants to exercise, no. You can just start. It's very, very helpful. I'd like to go back to the, the thing that I'm stuck on, and that is my friend's comment about don't ever fall. Are there suggestions you can make to those people who might be listening to this program today, how we can make our homes a little safer so that as we age, we're less likely to get hurt while we're in sure. our homes? Sure, well, of course, the throw rugs are a big culprit of people tripping over them, especially if they have an ambulatory device in the house. So if they have a walker, canes, you wanna get roll up and get rid of the throw rugs. You wanna check the wires for your lamps or other equipment that you have in the house to make sure they're not in an area where you're gonna walk and trip over them. Um, you wanna make sure that the lights are bright enough. The dim light of people walking can, can cause somebody to fall. You really have to look and make sure that your paths to each of the rooms are not cluttered. All of those those things. Yeah, somehow, no matter what I do, in the middle of the night, I trip over my dog. And I, I know him. one day I'm gonna hurt him and I'm gonna hurt myself. <laughs> so it sounds like we need to think about, before we have an injury, okay. how we can keep from getting injured. So you said, get rid of the throw rugs, mm -hmm. make sure the lights are, are bright enough, watch out for those wires. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that we incorporate some kind of exercise into our daily routine, whether it's chair yoga or taking a walk. Uh, it sounds like you're saying do it with a friend because uh, it's mm -hmm. almost, it's always more fun when you're doing it with somebody it's, it's, and just take baby steps. True, especially when you don't feel like doing something. It's nice when somebody calls and says, I'm coming by, we're, we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna go exercise, we're gonna go walk. Very, very helpful. How often do you have to do this? You know, I, I'm busy. I, I just don't have time to start exercising more and eating right, that just takes too long. How often do I have to do this? It's, it's really, a, if you think about 30 minutes a day, so figure, I mean, if you had a, a recumbent bike, an exercise bike at home, and you were sitting on it for 30 minutes and you're watching the news, or you, it really, 30 minutes goes by so quick, um, 
and, and if you like to do more aggressive exercise, then you don't have to do 30 minutes a day. You can do 40 minutes every other day. Whatever it is that works for you, depending on what level you're at. So either you're going to do vigorous exercise, moderate intensity exercise, or low intensity. That will determine really how, how long you do it per day. And I love your suggestion of thinking about ways to walk rather than taking the bus, even if it means getting out of the bus one or two stops earlier or getting off the subway one or two stops right, or, earlier. Or even parking in the parking lot further away from where you have to go to the store. Yeah. Anything you can get in, any kind of exercise, if you're in your home and you have steps and it's safe and you're going up and down the steps, maybe you're doing laundry in the basement, you think about how many times you, you do that a day. I have, um, my mother is 90 years old. She, the house she lives in has three flights of steps and she goes up and down those steps. There's no bathroom on the main floor so the exercise she gets every day from going up and down those three flights of steps has really made a difference. So I can blame the elevator yeah, in, in the true. building for being that's overweight. Yes. I can blame everybody in the world for, for not being as healthy as I can. Are there other things that you suggest to your patients that we haven't covered? Well, it, it, it really depends on the patient. They're going to give you the information and what they like to do. So depending on the assessment and depending on where their debility is or, or what we're working on, we'll make other suggestions for them. So for the people who are who may be watching our program, do you, what would you what, what advice would you give them if they think that physical therapy would help them? Is it something that they need their doctor to refer um, a, to a physical therapist or is it something that we should talk to our doctors about or is it something we should just do on our own? No, if, if, they, if they really think they need skilled physical therapy intervention, if they're having an issue or pain, or they've tried exercise and they, they still have some issues, and they want to go to a physical therapist, then the physician would have to refer them. So here, here it's everyone is referred through um, physical medicine and rehab. So our rehab attendings will refer those patients that are appropriate to physical therapy. So what would be the, I don't know, the warning sign that I might want to talk to my doctor about? Um, would it just be pain or is it something more subtle or is it something more obvious? Well, if it could be subtle, it could be more obvious. It doesn't just have to be pain. It, it has to do what has changed in my mobility. So if, if I'm walking and I'm noticing that, okay, my hamstring is a lot tighter, I can't bend forward as much as I used to to pick up something from the floor. What is, what is going on with my back that I can't? I don't really have a lot of pain, but I have this stiffness and I haven't had this before. So anything that's changed in terms of what they do in their activities of daily living every day um, or in their mobility that's changed where it's not just a day, like they're a little stiff from doing too much one day, that it just persists. They should definitely see their physician to be referred. Well, that's really interesting. I always thought that was just part of getting older. Are you saying that we shouldn't just accept that as I get older, I shouldn't be able to do what I was able to do five and ten years ago. If if there's something that if, if it's something that you can't with stretching that you have done before. So if if I normally stretch and I work out a little bit and I feel good and now I'm noticing I'm doing the same thing, but I'm I'm having an issue where I, I can't move as well. Yes, I, I would. That's yes, it, yes. When we age, all of those things, strength, flexibility, they all decrease. But if something does not seem normal to you, with you, you'll know your own body, then yes, I would, I would go to see a physician. That's really, really helpful because I think so often, so many of us get up and uh, I, I, I always, always call it uh, my grandpa noise. Uh -huh. I start getting out of bed, oh, I go, oh, there's my grandpa noise. And I just often just say, well, this is what happens as you get older. Um, but what you're saying is uh, just don't poo-poo it so fast. Make right. sure there isn't something going on. Right, and plus if you have that, I mean, we may have arthritis in our knee, we may have make that noise, but you want to make sure that the support structures around your knee or around that leg are stronger so they can protect that joint. You're not going to get rid of the arthritis, but you're going to be safer and you're going to be able to do more if you, if you are going to do those strengthening exercises and that balance training. That's really very helpful. So um, I, I know we're running out of time, but I, I want to find out a little bit more about how do people go into physical therapy? What do you need to know in order to become a physical therapist? Well, right now, um, the therapists are going in, they're coming out with a clinical doctoral degree. So when I was in school, it was a, you could apply, with, you would end up coming out of PT school with a bachelor's degree. It has progressed so that it's a master's doctoral level. 
So you're talking five to seven years. So all the physical therapists coming out of school now, between their undergraduate and finishing up with their doctoral degree, it, it's a much, much more extensive education and a lot more clinical affiliations. So we're, when I was in school, I had to select four different affiliations each six to eight weeks. Getting your doctor, doctoral degree is much more extensive because you're getting a clinical doc, doctorate. So people who might be thinking about physical therapy finish high school and then go to college and then, then apply, to, PT apply to physical therapy school. So it might it's additional four to five, six years? No, 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 no. In, including the bachelor's, it's a few years after that, I believe, mm. another three. So it sounds to me like when you, you're seeing a physical therapist, you're dealing with somebody who really knows anatomy. They really know biology. They really have been well trained about the body mm -hmm. and nutrition, as well as how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes. That sounds like a fascinating, fascinating field. What's the job market like for those people who might be thinking, hey, this sounds like something I'd be interested in doing? Well, I think in the hospitals, um, I, I, I know that going forward, they're looking at a shortage of physical therapists. Um, so anybody that is interested in this field, there are positions, hospitals, um, in the outpatient setting. Um, I, I would encourage people, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful field. Is this really. the kind of field that you can open a practice yourself or do you work with with physicians or do you or do you only work in a hospital? I think there are all of those settings. There are some therapists who do work with physicians. They'll have, I remember years ago, even there was a chiropractor, physical therapist, physiatrist, all in one office. Um, there's, there's regular offices just for physical therapists and they get the referrals to their private office. There's all different settings. That's wonderful. Um, so if I can recap a little bit, sure. it sounds like you're saying if there's any concern, speak to your doctor. Yes. And your doctor, if he or she decides you need to see a physical therapist, they'll make the referral. Yes. Um, so can you just assume that whoever your doctor is referring to is qualified and is licensed and is you know top notch? Well, I, if they just give you the f referral, you should be able to pick the therapist that you want to go to. I would, I mean, I've done that for for my mother. She's she's researched that a little bit. To make sure, and there are therapists now, um, the same as physicians, they specialize, some of them. So depending on what you're gonna go see the therapist for, you might wanna pick one that, that works with a, a specific patient population. So for example, as somebody who deals with the elderly or somebody who deals right. with balance issues or pain? Exactly. Or what, are the different, what are the different things I would wanna look for? Well, there's, there's therapists can get certifications now. They can and specialize in a specific field. I have one therapist who is doing that presently to become a neuro. Uh, he's gonna specialize in, in neuro rehab. Um, there's a, an occupational therapist who's gonna be a hand specialist. She's getting her doctoral degree and she's taking the coursework to get that certification. So we're pushing for more therapists to do that, whether it's in geriatrics, neuro, or orthopedics. What a fascinating field that clearly is wide open. Um, I, I always think when people are, are, are looking at different branches of medicine or nursing, it, it just fascinates me how, how our field is so vast and can support us and our, our desires to help people. Um, so let me, let me see if I get this right. If I have pain, or if any concerns about things that I want to be doing that I can't do, I should speak to my doctor. Yes. He or she may refer to a physical therapist um, who hopefully will be able to help. If there are things that I want to do to be healthier, in addition to seeing my doctor and worrying about my nu nutrition mm -hmm. and making sure that I'm trying to be healthier, yes. I need to do some exercise. I don't have to spend a lot of money in mm -hmm. a gym. I don't have to spend a lot of money going to a place I can find a friend, do something as simple as chair yoga. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. I can do something in my house Definitely. if it's if I can't get out for whatever reason. Maybe I uh, live in an area that isn't safe right. or I don't have the mobility to go out. I can still exercise. I can still do something to get me moving and be healthy. And um, keep it simple, take little steps. Yes. Try and incorporate more walking into my activities of daily living. 
Is there anything else we haven't talked about that you think our viewers should know about physical therapy and how to incorporate health into our lives? Um, no, I think, I think we've covered most of it. I would just say keep moving. Don't, don't be inactive. It, it's, just too, it's just too important, even for your well-being. Even just psychologically, you're just going to feel better. I love it. So keep on. Yes. Great. All right. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much for, for being here today. Thank you for giving us some wonderful, wonderful uh, ideas of how we can incorporate health into our lives. I want to thank you for your interest in the show and your desire to become involved and educated. For further information, I invite you to visit our website, www.zormed, that's Z-U-R-M-E-D.com, and check out our tools and connect with us on social media. You can also give us a call at 718-510-2103. So please stay well, be safe, and thank you for joining us. Goodbye.